In our house, if we see masses of ants coming into the home, it can sometimes say to us there's some trouble coming with the weather. Only a few days after the ant infestation, sure enough, the weather turned sour and it was a very unusual style of storm that caused a lot of damage. And this is what this video is about. Let's do it. This storm occurred in late summer in Australia. It was the 9th of February 2020. It's quite a delayed upload as you can see. This storm was very different to the usual style of summer storm that we would get. It hung around for a long period of time. It delivered a lot of rain. The one thing that sticks in my mind was just how much it was raining. And the rain sort of had nowhere to go. It started to stack up. The ground was getting super saturated. And the other factor to this storm was the amount of wind and the style of wind that would come through. It would come through in squalls and some of the squalls were very intensive and also very directional in the sense they would come along and literally score out a part of a suburb or parts of the bush. So the damage associated with this storm was a lot of trees have failed and that ended up bringing down a lot of the power infrastructure as well. There were some areas of Sydney and outside of Sydney region which were without power for many weeks after this storm. It was a widespread storm, it affected a lot of people and it was one of those strange storms. Insidious in the way it worked because to watch the storm it wasn't that dynamic to look at. But to see the aftermath and all of the fallen trees and damage in the area, that was amazing to see. When thinking about the amount of water that fell, it started to set up arguments between neighbours saying, oh, you've just flooded us out because a whole stack of water has come from your property onto our property. And then a counter argument was, well, we were flooded out as well because we've got water from the neighbour up the road from us. That's how much water was flowing. And it was very difficult for some people to understand that it's just not your neighbour who floods you out. That water has come all the way from the top of the hill and gone through many, many residents and neighbours to end up going through your property as well and further on down the hill. Yes, it was strange and unusual to see how some people perceived flooding and where water comes from. And maybe another thing that illustrates how bad the rain was was finding dead rats in the backyard. Now, if those guys can't survive this style of weather, that's really saying to me, wow, this is something a little bit different. In fact, there was all sorts of wildlife trying to find a dry place to hang out, and it's this style of weather that often brings all sorts of spiders into your home as well. It's wonderful. When I was making the Mess Hunter videos during 2020, I always pointed out the damage that was related back to this storm. There was lots and lots and lots of trees that had failed and fallen over. And what I noticed was there seemed to be lines of damage where a wind squall had come along and like carved out part of the bush. And also when I had a look at Cherry Brook, I was in that tall timbers park where the playground was burnt out. And that area there had also suffered a lot of tree loss. There was all those patches on the ground. And that's where those wonderful turpentine trees used to stand before the storm. As I keep saying, it's not one of those amazing storms to video where I can show you incredible storm action going on. But these days I always take videos of storms because you never know when that next insurance company battle is going to raise its ugly head. And it wasn't until the next day, and it was a bizarre day because most people didn't have power. The power outages was covering a massive area. Yet, the NBN nodes had these generators rushed out to them and attached, so we had the internet in a sense, but we didn't have any power to the house. So, just get your head wrapped around that. And I started to go around and I started to take some photographs of the damage that was in the suburb. So, sure enough, there's lots of trees that have failed, trees that have fallen on things, onto houses, just across the roads. And I started looking at the tree roots and the way they'd fallen over and where the roots had snapped. And nearly every time when I looked in that area, I could see there had been white ants which had come along and weakened the tree structure. 
so they've failed in this storm. Trees are wonderful, but within a suburb they can become extremely dangerous. And the reason is, is because a tree in a suburb is not competing with other trees as it would do down in the bush. Trees in the suburb grow giant canopies that become giant sails. And in this style of storm, if the tree has got any sort of issues with the roots, that tree is going to fail at the root level. If it's a severe storm, they often will snap somewhere on the trunk area. These days we've got environmentalists screaming, save the trees, don't cut any trees down. But these people aren't around when the tree fails, goes through your house or comes along and kills someone either by dropping a branch or falling on a car or a person. And unfortunately that happens way too often. So there you go. That was the nasty, nasty storm we had on the 9th of February 2020, which affected a huge area around Sydney, Australia. And from storms, hopefully we learn something. Number one, you never shelter under a tree in a storm. That's wildly dangerous to do. They can be hit by lightning and stuff can just fall from trees or a tree can fall over. Number two, water does not flow uphill. Water will track across properties flowing downhill. So if you've got water on your property and you've got a neighbor next to you downhill, well, guess what? They'll get your water as well. Number three, if we do have a power outage for a very long period of time, at least we'll have the internet up and running. I don't understand that even to today. And number four is, ants can predict the weather. If you're seeing masses of ants coming into your home looking for a nice, dry, warm spot, prepare for some really savage weather.